Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to talk about something DJI dropped on us this week called the DJI Goggles Racing Edition. Now we did not know anything about this. These have been pushed out with very little fanfare, just an email and a little bit of announcement and they have put them on the DJI web store. Now if you had the previous DJI goggles you knew what they were like. They are not the smallest in the world but they're not the largest either but they were really really very good FPV goggles actually for DJI aircraft. The quality of the screens was absolutely outstanding. Now they have taken these to the next level and done some things to be perfectly clear I never imagined they would do for one minute and that is they have added analog support so the DJI goggles now support all of the usual analog FPV systems on 5.8 gigahertz so you can use it with channels A, B, E, F and C that means race band as well so it supports the usual 40 channels also with 275 integer frequencies so it has full support for all of the analog channels it also will record digital video onto the internal SD card now, something that wouldn't do before. So it now has DVR recording built in as well. They have made some changes to the goggles and what DJI have said is they've made them look a lot better, more powerful for FPV racing. There's a new band um, with visor, although the overall design and size is exactly the same. Um, it is still fully compatible with OcuSync, but they have upgraded it as well. So, whereas the original DJI goggles only worked on 2.4 gigahertz for OcuSync, now it works on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz when used with the Mavic Pro. It still supports the Spark via USB and all of the other DJI aircraft as well. So, it still has all of that usual support. However, what they've done is put an SMA on it and also built in analog 5.8 FPV channel support as well, which is fantastic. It really, really is a big, big improvement. Further to this, they've also done some other changes. So it supports MPEG-4, .mv, and MKV movie files. As I said, it also records digital video onto the internal SD card as well. Now, alongside this, they have even taken it a step further. They have also released something called the OcuSync Video Transmission Module. This is a separate module which goes on the E end of any aircraft and allows you to use DJI's digital OcuSync video system instead of analog 5.8 video. So what they have released is a module and a camera system. So it doesn't accept analog video input, this module. It has a dedicated FPV camera, DJI State, it's 148 degrees field of view, global shutter, and it also supports video recording on the module as well. So with the OcuSync module on any aircraft, doesn't matter if it's DJI or not, you can install the OcuSync module which attaches to their digital camera module and it will transmit back to the goggles your HD video feed via OcuSync. So whereas they've also given it analog support, they've also given you the option to add digital video support as well. So this is going to be directly competing with the Connect system as well. So this is a big, big shift from what DJI have done before. Alongside this, you can now also connect third party remote controllers. Now, not everyone, but su certain supported third party remote controllers to the DJI goggles. And it will then transmit the control signal over OcuSync as well and you can connect to both SBUS and PPM via the video transmission module. So instead of using two separate frequencies or two separate 
transmission method, so your video on one and your control on another, you can use the benefits of OcuSync to bundle the two together and send them all down. This is quite a big thing, actually, when I think about it. Um, what DJI have done is given you the option on your FPV planes or your FPV quads of using their digital low latency feed system. Now, if you own a Mavic, you know how good OcuSync is. Is it completely latency-less? No. Every digital video system has latency of some form. DJI state is between 50 and 70 milliseconds in normal use at 480p, um, but that's maximum on average. Overall, the OcuSync has been a very, very good system for digital video feed. However, you can now use analog as well if you wanted to but i am very intrigued about the ocusync module it supports both 3s and 4s batteries um, as i said ppm and s bus it has 12 selectable video channels um, so you can individually step between different channels and what dji actually say is you can have up to 19 simultaneous ocusync systems in use at the same time so whereas on um, analog you tend to get a lot less on OcuSync DJI State in there are 12 channels on 5.8 and 7 channels on the 2.4 band now this is the digital channels not the analogs which give you a total of 19 simulate simultaneous systems in use at the same time without affecting each other that is impressive even among itself they support all of the other features that the DJI goggles had before. So um, all of the usual stuff like the control for the DJI drones, the head, uh, drones, the head tracking and everything like that. They already support that. However, on top of that, what they have added is analog video 5.8 gigahertz at the usual channels with the goggles and a separate digital OcuSync transmission system to be able to use the DJI system on any aircraft you want. Some additional interesting bits of information I've spotted whilst looking through the specs. Um, the transmission module has an SD card slot on it as well so you can put an SD card slot in the transmission module and an SD card slot in the goggles and it will record video on both sides. So it record the digital video from the camera on both the OcuSync unit and the goggles side as well. Um, on top of that, it also supports some telemetry input. Now, I've read through the manual and they are clearly stating there is a UART input on the OcuSync receiver for telemetry, but they don't explain it any further than that. They purely state that there is an input for getting telemetry data out of flight controllers. Now, if we go to the specs, they are listing certain flight controllers that it specifically works with. So what they've said is F3, F4, KISS and NASE. So I'm assuming via the usual data ports on that, you will be able to get telemetry out of it. IO interfaces include S-Bus, micro USB, PPM, UART, uh, MMCX, micro SD card slots. Um, they state video MPEG 4 is the video, but they have also increased it to .merv and .mkv as well. Um, the camera is a quarter inch CMOS, 1.2 megapixels, uh, 2.65 millimeter lens f2 with a global shutter and iso 100 to 3200 with a 48 degree field of view um this is surprisingly impressive opening up of the system dji haven't really done that before with regards to other fpv systems so this is clearly a step into the FPV world with the new DJI goggles. Um, you can see on that picture there that they've got the SMA on the top, so that is for the antenna. With regards to antennas, actually, I should talk about that a little bit more as well. They have released three antennas with them as well. Now, you can use non-DJI antennas. They've made that clear that you can do it, but they don't recommend it. But they have given out a circular polarized for 5.8, a circular polarized for 2.4 and 5.8 for 
for a fully integrated use so you can swap between easily and a linear polarized for 2.4 and 5.8 as well so they have given three antenna options so the goggles come either on their own and or as a package with the OcuSync transceiver now Looking at it, the goggles on their own are $549 or £549 in the UK. That is just the goggles racing edition on their own. They do a carry more backpack version, which is the goggles and the backpack for 609 Now, again, with the goggles on their own does not include the OcuSync transceiver or camera. You would have to buy them separately. They do do what they call a goggles racing combo for $859 or £899 in the UK. That includes everything you would ever need so it comes with the goggles the charger the wire clip the two sma antennas uh the cyclic polarized reverse sma connector micro usb cables cleaning cloth the ocusync camera the ocusync ear unit and the additional antennas, the cylindrical antennas, the dipole antennas for the transceiver. So whilst the big package does look expensive, it does include pretty much everything you would need. OcuSync 3-in-1 power cable, so that is for attaching to other flight controllers. Um, it is the complete package, and it includes the Carry More backpack as well. So for the $859, you can get the whole thing the whole thing in one um overall i'm actually a little bit blown away by these i had the dji goggles i don't have them now mostly for this reason i already have a set of fact charts v3s and i have a headplay hd i spent more time on my analog goggles goggles than i did digital so for me it wasn't worth keeping all three just because of the expense however I am seriously, seriously considering selling both my other sets of goggles and getting this piece of equipment because there's something that's really, really intriguing me is getting this OcuSync receiver on one of my FPV planes. I really want to get this on my Bixler or maybe even on one of my flying wings because I would love to give it a shot. It isn't going to be as low latency as analog. There is no question about that. However, to have a really high quality digital OcuSync feed really does um really does intrigue me actually it really really does so that is it for the new dji goggles just to summarize same goggles form factor no larger no smaller they have added analog 5.8 gigahertz fpv support for the usual channels so all of band a b e f c including race band 40 channels in total 275 integral frequencies they have also released alongside this the OcuSync ear end transmission module. That transmission module comes doesn't come with but supports a dedicated DJI camera which is 1.2 megapixels. Again, this is competing directly with the Connex system. It will transmit video on both 5.8 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz over the OcuSync system back to the goggles at low latency. It also supports S bus and PPM, so you can connect your third party controller to the DJI goggles, and rather than use the built in transmission module in your controller, it will send your control signal over the digital OcuSync system to their ear end and straight into the flight controller. It supports multiple of versions of the usual FPV flight controllers, the KISS, the NASE, and it does support input for some telemetry as well. So you will get some on-screen telemetry. They have also expanded the OcuSync frequencies from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz as well um it's a big big change big big change i want to see if i can get my hands on a set of these get playing with them and give you guys my opinions because i'm actually very very impressed if you're interested in ordering a set there are some links in the video i'd appreciate if you'd use them please subscribe to the channel and i will do another video again soon thank you very much for watching